I'm George Crump with Store One. Today we're going to talk about our S1 backup products, uh, flash first technology, and why that is so powerful for customers looking to uh, really improve their RPO and RTO, and also uh, just really be able to scale and recover uh, much, much quicker. So, what happens with flash first? So, uh, you know, typical backup environment, we've got a, a backup application out here. And, and it's backing up a variety of different uh, things like uh, databases. Uh, I'm sure it's going to back up something like VMware. And then Hyper-V. And then also, you know, typically a NAS or something like that. Now all that data is going to run into the backup application and then come out and typically end on a backup storage device. Most of the time that backup storage device is a disk-based uh, backup target. But almost all the modern backup applications now do some sort of a block level incremental or change block uh, track backup. And what that means is data no longer comes in in one continuous stream. It's much more randomized now. And so the the, the traditional backup job that used to be just was once, uh, this one big sequential once a night job, now is happening uh, several hours at a time. Uh, and in some cases, we're having customers that are backing up their entire environment almost on an hourly basis. Uh, so that fundamentally changes the, the way you're receiving data. So the, what we've done with uh, S1 Backup is it's a, it's a two-tiered system. And the first tier is flash, which we call our flash first technology because all the backups go to uh, flash first. And so what happens is as the uh, backup uh, software is sending us data, we're receiving it into this flash tier and we're going to be able to receive it uh, very, very quickly because of the performance of flash. Not only just the performance of flash, but because of the work store one did over its first eight years, rewriting and collapsing the storage I.O. stack, we can get incredibly good performance out of a very few flash drives. So we're not talking about, uh, you know, 48 or 96 flash drives here. We're typically using 12 to 24 flash drives, depending on what your capacity requirements are. Now, so all of this data gets received there. And as I said, it's flash first, not flash only. So the the next thing we do is we sequentially write it to the hard disk tier. So this secondary tier is hard disk based. And then that hard disk tier is really your retention tier. We'll talk about that in a future video. But on with this flash tier, what we're able to do is just receive these backup jobs very, very quickly uh, and then write them sequentially to the hard disk tier. If the flash tier is big enough, we can receive all the incrementals and do what's called a consolidation job and create net new fools right off of this flash tier in uh, and that speeds up that very time consuming process. The other thing that we do while we're receiving these backup jobs is we will take immutable snapshots of every backup job that we you send us and that protects you from a ransomware attack. So the next thing that we use the flash first technology for is to store backup metadata. So traditionally backup, uh, they create, it creates its own data. Uh, these are the indexes and configuration files that a backup application needs in order to operate. We've seen these become the target of ransomware attacks. And so what we're able to do with our flash first technology is actually store that metadata up here. And we store it live there. It doesn't have to, act, we're not copying it or anything. So we become the production storage for the backup server itself. While we're doing that, we're also taking those immutable snapshots once again. So now these are now protected from the ransomware attack and they're in sync with the backup data. So when you go to roll back a backup, if, it's, if you're under attack, the index rolls back with it and then you have a perfectly in sync uh, copy. Uh, you also, in most cases, will see a pretty tremendous performance improvement by doing this when you're doing uh, queries and searches against your, your backup environment. 
Now the, the third and final thing that we do with our Flash First technology is use it for what we call standby storage. And what that means is I can use either the product's uh, instant recovery capability uh, or you can just natively restore and we can dynamically reallocate the Flash tier to be uh, standby storage. And, and that becomes important because now I can deliver the type of performance that you expect in production right off of your backup appliance. Now on top of this, of course, uh, we have our Store One uh, software called S1 Backup. Right? And it's it's active active. So we've got two controllers here running the product. And so now what happens is we've you've instantiated, you're running your production data here. Uh, these uh, you have active active access to it, and then we can pr present uh, a variety of different file and block protocols, uh, including fiber channel, iSCSI, and NVMe over fabric, as well as file protocols like NFS and SMB. Uh, we also support S3 uh, if you need to recover or back up to that. So all of those protocols are supported for both backup and recovery, but in a recovery environment, it's nice to know that you can recover, get the production class performance that you want, get the availability that you need, and send it back to that application in the protocol that it's expecting. And all of that works seamlessly uh, for you as a result of uh, the solution. So that's our Flash First technology. If you want to learn more, please go to store1.com backup.